Well, hey, Mountainside, hope your week is off to a great start. I know mine began uh, in an awesome kind of way Sunday morning. And I've said this before. I wish everyone could sit on that front row at least one Sunday and just be blessed by the by the voices of everyone singing behind you. It is such a blessing every week, but there are some Sundays just just even more so, and this past Sunday was one of those. Hey, it was great to see Kirk Rainwater and Richard Diaz back with us after their, their surgeries and the different things that they had to deal with, and I know that they were thankful to be back as well. Now, on a sad note, I, I hate to have to say this one, but our sympathies extended to Steve Oberg and his family. His dad did pass away late Sunday afternoon, uh, had a long battle with, uh, with pneumonia, and, and uh, in the end, uh, I guess he lost the earthly battle, but he he won the eternal battle because he was a believer and God has taken Mr. Paul Oberg home. So praise God for that. But but keep the Oberg family in your prayers as they continue with the business of life. Another thing that's that's heavy on my heart and it's where I'm going to spend my time this evening. It's just it's the turmoil in our country and it's just been magnified in this last year and a half with with COVID and how to respond to all of these things. I'm not here tonight to tell you how to respond to COVID. I'm not here to tell you how to respond to all the different mandates. I'm not here tonight to tell anyone how to respond to the different po politics that are going on, the labor crisis, the supply chain crisis. Wow, the violence in our cities. But what I do want to do is remind us all that regardless of what's happening in this world, we cannot lose sight of our mission, and that's to share Jesus, to be Jesus to this world to the best of our ability. In general, uh, we're here to make a kingdom difference. That's an eternal difference for the world around us. And if a much larger percentage of our world, if they were believers, I don't think we, I know we wouldn't be in near the turmoil that we find ourselves in today. But sadly, that isn't the case, is it? Something else that's heavy on my heart and it's the reality that this month, the month of November and, and December, they represent a lot of what I'm just going to call mandate deadlines. And that's simply this, no vaccine, no job. And this is real church, and it's going to have deep effects on our country, and it'll affect every aspect of our lives because it's pretty apparent that there's a large percentage of, of people who do not want to get the vaccine. And I'm not here tonight to condemn that person that chooses not to get the vaccine. I'm not here tonight to condemn someone because they've chosen to get the vaccine. I truly get both sides. I, I understand. And because I'm a Christian, I know that I need to respect everyone's personal health decisions that they make for themselves. But church, at the same time, we need to be in fervent prayer for our country because the challenge that we may be facing, and it may happen here very quickly, could easily be the likes of what our world went through in the Depression back in the 20s and 30s of the last century. And I say that because the catastrophic loss of employment that we could possibly see, it'll be devastating. So tonight, I'm asking that, that all of you be in prayer for our country. Ask God specifically to intervene, to give us clear truth. Ask God for his forgiveness for what we've become as a country. I know sometimes we sadden our God greatly. But I'm asking you to pray, to pray in a way that maybe you've never done before. Quite frankly, because it's time. The church needs to be in prayer. I know the Israelites, they had, had moments where just such a prayer was necessary, and God blessed that prayer. And tonight, uh, I'm going to read Nehemiah's prayer. And this is right after he found out the condition of Jerusalem, the, the holy city, uh, when his brother came into to town. And he didn't, this is what's neat, Nehemiah didn't just say, oh, that's terrible, oh, oh, well, no, that's not what he did. He immediately went to the Father to, in prayer, and then he went to work. And he went to work trusting that God would be with him all the way, and God was. And I feel this prayer is very applicable to us today in this country because the Christian world is so often guilty of becoming the same thing God's chosen people became so often thousands of years ago. And what is that? Well, they were guilty. We're guilty of becoming just like the world around us, looking just like the world around us. 
And how can we not lose God's blessing when that's the case? And when we do that, we're not being the agent of change, helping the world to see Jesus Christ, to become like Christ. No, we need Nehemiah's prayer. Let me read that. Nehemiah chapter 1. In late autumn, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. Anna and I, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. And I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. And they said to me, things are not going well for those who returned to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. And when I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. And then I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands, listen to my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, the decrees, the regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. The people you rescued by your great power and strong hand are your servants. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to the prayer of those who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success by making the king favorable to me. Put into his heart to be kind to me. In those days, I was the king's cupbearer. Church, what I'm asking you to do is to go to the Father in prayer for our country and do so with the kind of fervency, the kind of urgency that Nehemiah did for the great city of Jerusalem thousands of years ago. I truly believe with all my heart, if the Christian world will do this, he will honor our prayer and he will see us through this moment in time and get us to a better place. Hey, thank you uh, for tuning in. I know tonight's a little bit different, but sometimes there's just things on your heart and you just you need to share. And I, I pray that this is this is something that a lot of you've been thinking about. But may we now get on our knees and let's pray. Let's pray for God's blessing. Let's pray for let's pray for God's will rather than the will of ourselves. Hey, thank you and have a great rest of the week.